Mike Napoli and I collect Panini baseball cards. Hello everybody, Tracy Hackler back on day two of the Panini Spring Training Road Trip and joined by a guy who really needs no introduction, but uh, he's the incomparable, the magnificently bearded Mike Napoli, World Series champion, uh, uh, cult hero among collectors and, and uh, baseball fans, and you've been nice enough, you came by, you signed a bunch of your Prism cards, and uh, we kind of taught you a little bit about the rainbow, chasing the rainbow, and yeah. how one collector on Twitter said his life would be complete if he <laughs> If you got the rainbow, what are your thoughts when you get uh, reactions like that from fans? Uh, I mean, it's pretty cool, you know. Um, they just like to collect, and it's uh, something that, you know, it's a hobby that they enjoy. So um, it's pretty cool that somebody wants your cards, and, uh, you know, I guess you're doing some things in this game that, that people want to collect your cards. Well, you you do a lot of things in the game, but you seem to kind of raise your game in the postseason. Um, is that a... a is that something that just happens, or is it something that you strive for? I mean, what, what, how do you explain it? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not scared. You know, it's the situation, I like the situation. Um, it's a fun time of the year. You know, you go into the last month into the playoffs. It's, uh, it's time to go and it's crunch time. So um, I really enjoy that time of the year. It's, uh, it's a fun time for me, and you, know, you like to you know, do great things in front of a lot of people because a lot of people are watching at that time. What? Uh, when's the last time you were? authentically nervous in a game situation? Uh, I mean, I, I'd always get some butterflies before a game, you know. Um, but I think it's just anxious, you know, to be out there. But um, you know, the World Series, you know, this year, because I went to the World Series for, for Texas mm -hmm. and uh, got a taste of it. But um, you know, going, you know, being in Boston, just uh, the crowd was crazy. It was, it was nuts. Um, I had a little butterflies going, but, you know, once that first pitch, you know, was done. I was I was ready to go. Now, when you guys clinched it, was it was the feeling everything you thought it would be, or was it was it a letdown? Was it more than you thought it would be? It was uh, it was more. I, I you really can't plan it out because I was so close before. Mm -hmm. You know, I was one oh strike gosh, away yeah, twice. In Texas, away. You know, so um, I think that when when it happened, it was just just the joy. It was. It was unbelievable. You know, I was kind of short of breath. You know, running around, screaming. You know, <laughs> had my family there. It was just uh, a great time. Then going to celebrate. You know, after. It was, uh, How long was the party? For me, about a month. <laughs> <laughs> but no, we we uh, uh, we were in there for a good two hours. You know, spraying champagne on each other. Um, you know, went out after you know, party and had a good time. Did you learn anything in your near miss with Texas that 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 helped you with Boston? Um, I mean, it was so tough the way we lost, you know. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's tough to win a World Series. Mm -hmm. You know, when you get there, you got to, you know, take every opportunity to try to, you know, win that thing. You know, I'm fortunate enough to get back there and, and win it. So, um, it's tough making a playoff. So, when you get your chances, you just got to go. And uh, hopefully everything works out. So, of all the things that, do, do you collect a lot of things from your uh, career? Bats or jerseys or anything? Oh yeah, I mean I got, I mean, um, storage unit back down in Fort Lauderdale that I got, you know, just tons of stuff, different jerseys from guys, I and mean, my bats, different guys' bats, gloves, I and mean, catcher's gear, everything I got. It's all you know, back home in the storage unit. Is there anything more valuable in your collection than that World Series right now? No, <laughs> absolutely not. I, I haven't get, even got it yet. But when you guys get it, um, we get an opening day, you know, in Boston, so it's gonna be a. Exciting day. Have you seen mock-ups or prototypes or anything of them yet? They, they're not. They're keeping it wow. pretty tight. So. Uh, well, speaking of collectibles, obviously we we make uh, baseball cards, and I don't know when the last time you've opened packs of baseball cards is, but in a while. You've been nice enough to, to open a few packs of Donruss. So yeah. We don't have to go through the whole box, but uh, Donruss is a uh, proud, venerable name from baseball collecting's past, and we brought it back uh, for 2014, and. Uh, by all accounts so far, it's been uh, well received by collectors. And that's a box topper. We'll get to that in a minute. Yeah. There's a, there was a secret here. I'm just going to go over with you. But I can get a lot of room at the top. Mm -hmm. All right. And you pull that flat back there and just like that. It's like a. There you, you go. Get enough room? Yeah, absolutely. Good. Yeah, just pull. Yeah, just pull. 
Hey, yep. That doesn't really work. Well, well there you go. Now you're getting it. See, it's you just want access. Am I going to have to show them a different way to open it? Yes. I think that you would. Uh, Tory Hunter. That's my man right there. I played with him for a couple years in Anaheim. Back at the start of your career? or? No, it was the last two years. Well, his first two years there, but my last two years. Nice, right, Amber. Amber. Going old school here. Need it. Say that name. Yin Chen. Yes. Yeah, He's going in the bike spokes. Look at that. Man, All right? Look at that. That's just. That's Mike Napoli's card for those. And you just signed a, a Mike Napoli card for Chris Johnson, who was in here. He had to have his Mike Napoli. There you go. You're getting it. Now I know you've done interviews. Your your beard hair in a trading car. We've <laughs> done jerseys. We've done bats. Well, when you decide to shave it, okay. And I don't know when that's going to be, but when you do, oh, what we got here. That's called a decoy car. Is it? Yeah, because it, let me tell you why. So we have randomly inserted in these packs are thicker memorabilia cards that have pieces of game worn jersey in them. And so to to deter people from searching uh, the packs looking for the thick ones, gotcha. we randomly place those in there. But anyway, back to your beard. I know you're trying to change the subject on me, but um, when you decide to shave, yeah. no no rush whatsoever, but when you do, will you at least let us come to the table with a, a, an opportunity to make the Mike Napoli beard trading card? That'd be awesome, wouldn't it? Yeah. That'd be awesome, wouldn't it? You heard it. That'd be cool. It'd be unique. It would be a. It'd be kind of weird, my facial hair on a card. I know, but it's like. People want that? Yeah, because what we do with our cards is we bring baseball fans as close as possible to their on field heroes. Okay. And so they want a piece of the beard. They want a piece of the beard. And for a guy as unique and individualistic as you are, I think a beard card would raise the bar, so to speak. Just think about it. I might, I might have to make that happen. We'll see. All right, I like the way you think. Now the beard, you've always had some kind of scruff or mm. whatever, but, but the full-grown, full, just passionate beard. You got to take it to another level last year. We started with Johnny Gomes. Um, just basically we were all talking, me, him, uh, Pee Wee, or Pedroia. We uh, basically were like, let's just grow our beards out before you knew it. We had the whole city doing it. <laughs> it was crazy. It was awesome. They had a beard night. You know, so um, it was cool. It was cool for the fans. You know, cool for the city. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, everywhere else. I, mean, I, I got home and everyone had beards. You know, all my buddies. You know, everyone around the town. It was it was pretty cool that um, you people just catch on and want to do what you do. Right. You know, so it was. Uh, it's just another thing that we had going on in our clubhouse. Well, there's a Duck Dynasty thing too. That's that's real big, right? And, and yeah. um, what kind of grooming tips? Did the conditioner trim? Yeah, I mean, I, mean what? I had a different beard company sending me uh, beard shampoo, conditioner, comb, beard oil, um, all kind of cloth. You know, it, was, uh, it was unbelievable. You know, all the stuff that like, we get sent into our locker room. They want us to use their right, stuff. Right, right. Uh, it was pretty cool. So uh, everyone had their own little brush. It was uh, we carry it around everywhere. We had it in our back pockets all the way. We take it out and brush it all the time. I, I catch myself in the mirror sometimes in the morning. Just be like, man. <laughs> you know. So you know, it. we all fell in love with it, and uh, it was just another cool thing. Well, as far as beards go, that, that's a great one, man. I, it, if I could grow a beard like that, I would. <laughs> but I'm envious of your ability and what you've done with it. And so as a guy who's done uh, your sh fair share of catching, is there one pitcher from history that you would have most liked to have caught that you didn't get a chance to? If there was any pitcher? Yeah. Catch? In my time? Yeah. Well, no, just of all time. Of all time? Ah, uh, Nolan. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, just bulldog, just getting after people, knocking people down. Presence. Mm -hmm. you know, um, I think that would have been pretty cool to do. You got close to him when you were in Texas. What, how, how big a role did he play in kind of turning that that thing around? 
Uh, I mean, he he uh, kept his distance. You know, he really didn't see too much of him. We saw him sometimes in the dugout. But I'm pretty. I mean, he, he was open to conversation. I know pitchers would go and talk to him. Yeah. Uh, he would be kind of dumb not to. Yeah. You know. Uh, but no, no quiet. You know, he'd have a conversation with him in the dugout before a game. Um, it was awesome, you know, I could kind of get nervous. It's right. And still, you know, you'd, you'd be in there and it's almost a nervous feeling that you know, Nolan Ryan's right there. Right. You know, sitting in our dugout, you know, so um, it was pretty cool. You know, he uh, kept his distance and um, let us do our thing. Cool. Now, last question, I'll let you go. So you're you're in charge of Painting America for one day and you got to make the ultimate Mike Napoli baseball card. What's on the front of it, what picture, and what does the back say? What's on the front of it? Yeah. He definitely hit the homer. Okay. For sure. On the back? Like stats? Yeah, stats, bio, guilty pleasures, uh, anything. Um, what you do in the off season? Yeah, sure. I mean, just a bio. I like the fish. Do a little hunting. Okay. Um, I don't know. Like spirits. <laughs> and biggest fish that you've ever caught? Um, Most memorable fish you've ever caught? Probably down in uh, Cabo. I caught about a 140 pound mako. Wow. Yeah. It sliced it up right there on the, on the boat. That's Did you sushi, yeah. Wow. It was pretty good. That's um, sweet. It was actually with Adam Kennedy and uh, John Lack. They both caught blue marlins. How big are those things? They're, they're pretty big. Eat um, that stuff, dude? No, we, we threw those back. <laughs> we ain't taking those on the plane to get <laughs> stuff, so um, yeah, it was, uh, it was a good trip. Well, this has been a good spring training road trip with a hashtag in front of it. See, see what I did there? Uh, Mike, thank you for coming by. Yeah, thanks coming for having me. Oh, of course. Um, until next time, he's Mike Napoli. I'm not.